you know, when it comes to wild harvest operations, sustainability is, is always a question. Uh, and it's, it's a question that actually runs through uh, every aspect of operation from um, how much you harvest in each in each uh, plot of land, yeah. um, what the, the the individuals involved from the economic standpoint of it, yeah. uh, how sustainable the operations is in the long run. Uh, so one of the main key things about wild harvest is um, there is always a certain percentage of harvest um, that determines whether that harvest is going to be um, sustainable or not compared to the amount that you can you can take from each piece of land. So you show up on a piece of land, what is that sustainable percentage? Um, well, uh, the cool thing about pine pollen in particular is that uh, when you, when you uh, from, a, from a harvest standpoint, when you're showing up on a piece of land, uh, there's only so much that you can reach to harvest. So if you're looking at a tree making, a mature tree roughly making about three kilograms of pollen per year, at the most, you're there, you're picking up about uh, you know, 150, um, maybe, uh, you know, 160 grams uh, from those lower branches that you can reach. So you're, you're taking yeah. like less than 3%, uh, 2% of what a, what a tree yeah. can make. Yeah, yeah, basically it doesn't make much sense for a picker to come in and spend a lot of time picking a whole tree because there's only a certain amount that's really viable to pick yeah. that makes him sense to get volumes. So, and there's a lot of times on the backside of that tree, same thing, like it's not ready to pollinate. And they're not gonna pick things that are not ready to pollinate too. This is another interesting thing. Like the buds come off the tree so much easier when they're ready to be ripe, when they're ripe. Um, if they're not ready to be picked yet, it's a challenge and it's not worth their while. So that's another thing. Like we only pick what's ready to pick at the time it is. And uh, it really goes quick. Pickers only spend a little bit of time in each area before they go to the next. So that really makes it such a small percentage when considering on how much pine is out there. Yeah, and when it starts pollinating, it's gone within one or three, uh, one to three days, yeah. you know? So like you're in a uh, piece of land and you can get only as much uh, before it starts pollinating. Yeah. The other, uh, you know, more intricate aspect of sustainability is that the more and more we create understanding and awareness around what pine pollen is, the more we are gonna uh, change individuals' perspective about uh, the pine tree and the forest. Uh, traditionally and historically, uh, any kind of plant that has some uh, food value or economic value to us, we have preserved it, we have sustained it, uh, we have looked at it, we have, um, you know, we have fostered it. Um, so um, you, look at, you look at pine and you say, okay, well, it's got a lot of value in terms of its lumber, in terms of its uh, carbon fixing, and, and in terms of you know, uh, uh, forest lands and wetlands. Uh, and then you, you, all of a sudden you change your perspective and say, oh, hold on a second, it's actually a, a fruit tree, uh, which oven itself, getting, getting that knowledge out uh, is going to make um, human beings in general view pine forests differently and respect them differently. Um, so uh, getting that information out there is important. The thing about the sustainability is um, the, the aspect of the fair wild standards that we are trying to um, incorporate into, into our operations. Um, you know, uh, it's, uh, the, there hasn't been any um, kind of governing uh, set of standards as far as wild foraging goes uh, up until uh, recently. Uh, the, uh, the world governments and uh, um, individuals with stakes got together uh, and decided that, okay, well, let's create a set of standards. And that's, that standards has gone through a couple of revisions. And now um, you're looking at uh, fair wild standard two, which really is going to be the, uh, the measuring standard that wild harvest is, is, is looked at uh, and compared to. Uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's, the set of standards is, uh, is very similar to, to fair trade in the sense of uh, it's um, it protecting the rights of the, uh, the landowner, the harvester, the, the primary producer, but uh, it also incorporates the environmental standard of uh, sustainability in terms of um, uh, harvesting to the point that uh, species are, are maintained and, and species diversity is maintained in uh, each segment of the land. Yeah. We are also, uh, one of the things we've been doing, which uh, you know, this ties into our partnership with landowners, uh, 
each harvest, each batch of harvest that we make, uh, we test for environmental residues, we test for um, pesticides, herbicides, insecticides uh, within the product uh, as, as it is needed by organic standards. So uh, basically we're we are going in there, we, we are creating data about uh, how, how different uh, areas of harvest are, um, are environmentally impacted from year to year as we collect this data. Yeah. Um, and that leads us to our soaps. Um, our soaps have been just a little bit of a fun project. Um, we teamed up with a local girl who makes um, really the best soaps I've ever tried. And uh, she was trying to find great ways to use our byproducts in order to our waste products in order to make some soaps. And there's a lot of beneficial, cool things. We use actually raw pine pollen in this stuff. Uh, we use the actual, um, the husks that are left over, which there's a lot of nutritional benefits left over in those husks that we haven't even discussed yet that are used in these soaps. And it acts a little bit as an exfoliant. Um, yeah, the chaga itself, like with this high antioxidants and the, um, the the spruce tips being so high in vitamin C, they're just all really cool products that we're able to use in this soap. And it just rounds out the message of sustainability where we're trying to use as much as we can from the products we harvest in the forest without disposing them. Yeah. The other thing is, one of the things we do with, you know, we've, over the last few years, we have actually generated a lot of data about uh, the, the seasonal variations uh, that goes through, uh, through the pollination and, uh, uh, we have a good idea of uh, the, the different tree types and which ones to go for and which ones to leave out. As an example, uh, white pine was, was one of the trees that initially we were considering it, uh, but uh, looking at, uh, at its distribution and looking at the fact that it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been impacted by, uh, by pests and its population is dropping, um, made us switch away um, our attention to interior BC as opposed to the coastal BC for, for our sources of pine pollen. Um, so uh, we do keep, uh, keep track of uh, what is happening to, to the species that we work with, and we think that um, some, of the, uh, some of the testing that we do with, with the different trees is actually helping us generate data that can be used uh, in terms of the environmental impact of other activities in an area to, to the pine trees. So uh, it, it allows us to track what is happening. Yeah, well said. Yeah, a lot of our remaining product, obviously we end up with a lot of husks at the end of the season. And I mean, it can be used for multiple reasons. Uh, obviously not enough to make all soaps. So it's used as shavings inside horse stalls and uh, it's used for the pigs as, as bedding. Um, it's also just composted a lot of times, just putting back into the soil and then return back into soil. Um, yeah, obviously there's zero footprint when we're done where we're working. And uh, if anything, we're just nourishing the areas that we have been in and making it more nutrient dense yeah so you know in general as a company we are we are zero waste we are um, we are sustainable and we are actually setting the standards for sustainability in wild harvest in Canada there isn't um, a any example of a company that I can think of that is engaged in wild harvest that uh, that has built the structures we have built uh, to to have that relationship with the landowners with the harvesters and that's that primal relationship with the land in terms of respecting it honoring it and creating uh, processes within it that that sustains the people uh, and the land itself without without having a negative impact and uh, and having a long-term positive uh, outcome from this for everyone if you have any questions or you want any additional information feel free to reach out to us at info at canadianpinepollen.com that's our website or that's our email address and then check out our website canadianpinepollen.com yeah and look at our, our other videos on our youtube channel yeah. to to answer any questions that you might have yeah Lots of good content.